Hey guys, how you doing? Today I'm going to talk about testing mediocrity. Now I want to tell you this, on the other end of this screen, I want you to take a good look at yourself. I'm going to talk to you real quick before I get into this about the end game. I want to tell you, well first of all, my name is Andy Elliott. And if you don't know who I am, I've been in the car business for over 22 years. I hold the record for most money made in sales selling cars in the States. I made $715,000 selling cars. And I want to share this with you in one year. I have a severe learning disability, okay? And when I say severe learning disability, like I'll just lay it out there. Because I'm going to tell you this, I felt like everybody had one up on me in life. So as I talk about testing mediocrity, I want you to think about you, where you're at, and I want to tell you where I come from. And I want to share this with you. This is something that scared the hell out of me is that I figured, man, like I'm gonna live my whole life, right? And this is me at 18. I'm gonna live my whole life and I'm gonna go to heaven. And I'm gonna end up going to heaven and I'm gonna be like 225 pounds. I'm gonna be out of shape. I lived a normal life and that's okay. You know, I didn't make a bunch of money. You know, mom, I never had a mom in my life. Five brothers and sisters, right? Dad raised us. Literally made bad grades in school. You know, like, that was my life, and like I was gonna go up to heaven, and like at the end of my life, like I'm good, right? And I get up there, and I look at this chart. Now I'm, I'm sitting there with God, and God's got this chart, and He's, and I, and I like look at it, and it says Andy Elliott, 195 pounds lean. And I'm like, man, was that the life I was supposed to have? Was that it, Andy Elliott, incredible businessman, one of the smartest people in the world. And I'm looking at this chart, and that's, that's not me, but that's who I was supposed to be. But because I let mediocrity and I let things that I'm not great at get in the way, I never got that. So I'm looking at this chart, and God's going over with me who I was supposed to be. You were supposed to help tons of people. You, you were supposed to marry way up and have an amazing wife. You were supposed to have three incredible children. You're supposed, and as I'm looking at this chart, I'm like... Oh my God, man. Like, my God, like, was that who I was supposed to be? And my life's over. And at that point, I decided that I can live as a victim, okay, in mediocrity, or I can decide to elevate up and decide to get in the pain zone and suffer. Let me tell you what pain is. Pain is weakness leaving the body. And on the other end, I want to share with you, nothing good happens in a comfortable environment. Nothing. And I don't care who you are. I don't care where you're at. I want you to join me if you got issues. I want to share this. I wear a bracelet on my hand every single day. It says if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. And anybody and everybody that's ran into me, if, you, if you're struggling or if you're hustling and you're trying to put together a life for yourself, and I see I'm like, man, dude, this guy's got drive. Guess what? I take my bracelet off my hand and I give it to him every time. I say, hey, put this on, man. Okay? Don't forget, if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. Some of you guys on the other end, right, we talk about money a lot, right? Like I always talk about closing negotiations, overcoming objections, word tracks, how to become a better salesman. But what matters if you don't have your mind right, you can't even accept that good life and make good money. You've got to understand, you can't play the victim and you need to test mediocrity in your life. Are you trying to be the average? I mean, the, the, sorry, the best of the 10 average people you're hanging out with? Like, is that your goal? Or are you trying to be one of the best sales guys in the country? You know, because you have the ability to do it. When I was 18 and I didn't even have enough money to buy lunch, you think I ever thought about making a million a year? No, I've done it eight years straight now. Why? Because I know my weaknesses and I battle them on the daily. And I want to share with you, you need to identify what your weaknesses are. And mine was, my biggest deal was I was a bad, bad test taker. I had a severe learning disability. So let me just tell you this, like if I was going to take a test and I was going to learn something, like I literally had to write down, like I would take a page in a book. And by the way, how I read a book is like this. If I go read a book, the first book I ever read in my life was Tom Hopkins' Low Profile Selling. It was Sell Like a Lion, Act Like a Lamb. In every page I read, I wrote it down on a spiral notebook as I read it. The whole book. 
And then when I was done, I, like, I was like, oh, bam, yeah, you know, I heard that. I remember this. Boom, and I would pull it out of the book. But if I wouldn't have wrote it down, I have stacks. I have 500 spiral notebooks just from writing because it's the only way that I can beat the way that I learn. But guess what? When I get it, I'm deadly at it, but it's hard for me to get it. And I want to share this with you. If I can take that learning disability and I'm willing to go in and hustle and put in the work to learn it, whatever it is that you're struggling against, you can do it, okay? So I want to share this with you. If you're out there and you're ready to take on the challenge, shoot me a text message, 918-210-0254. It's real simple. Say, Andy, send me the bracelet. I will send to your house a bracelet that says, if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. And in 2020, I want you to take mediocrity and I want you to get it the hell out of your life. I don't want you to have it in there anymore. And what I want you to understand is this, is that being the best of the average people around you isn't going to work. Being a one-timer, like making a great month one time, I mean, don't live off that. You climb the mountain, you come back down and go climb another one. That's what life's about. I feel like at the end of your life, you're going to see your chart, okay? And don't sit there and look at that chart at the end of your life when your life's over and realize that you were supposed to be this incredible person. God saw it. You didn't see it. All right, so let's move on here. I'm going to talk about testing mediocrity. What I'm going to do, number one, I'm going to tell you how you're going to feel, right? Going to where we're going to go together from where you've been. Guys, it feels amazing. I want to share this with you. I didn't have any legs when I started. When I felt like I, when I got into the business of selling, I honestly felt like I had no legs. I felt like there was these guys that had this amazing platform. They were good speakers. They were good at talking. They were better looking. They had nicer clothes. You know what I'm saying? They had relationships with people. They had business experience. Maybe their father was in the car business. You know what I'm saying? Like they always had all these like advantages on me. But you know what? I grew some legs. I didn't need them. I don't want anything handed to me. So if you're on the other end looking for the easy way out, there isn't one. The easy way is being dead broke and living in jail your whole life. When right now, you have the ability to make more money than you ever made in your life. Guys, I'm standing here. I'm a text message away. You're staring at your phone. 918-210-0254. Andy, send me the bracelet. If it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. By the way, can you help me? Shoot, yeah, I'll help you, man. Dude, I don't care about your money. I don't care about anything. You know what I care about? Is you living your best life and pulling you out of your comfort zone. Nothing good happens being comfortable. Everything you want in life, everything, and 10 times more is right on the other side of you being uncomfortable. Live in that zone. All right, use negative stuff, the BS that used to make you weak. Use it as power now to fuel you. Everybody said I wouldn't make it. Everybody. Everybody said I wouldn't make it. I want to tell you, you don't know how bad, and I didn't give a crap about what they said. It used to kind of eat me up a little bit when I was younger. Now, it's fuel. It's like gasoline. Somebody's like, hey man, you can't do that. Yeah, everybody says it can't happen until it does, right? And I'm going to tell you this. My favorite thing to say is somebody to say, hey, that can't happen. I've got a salesman, and I've got many, but I've got one specifically that come from nothing, literally nothing, Bought Goodwill clothes to get in the car business. Man, no parents, physically abused as a kid, right? Dad's murdered. Mom doesn't give a shit about him. Family's gone. Dude, no one. Abandoned, all alone, the runt, the underdog. I've been training him now for six months. He was fired from the first two car dealerships within the first two weeks of where he worked. Great guy, great, great guy, killer heart, give you the shirt off his back. Has nothing though. And because he's so prejudged by everybody, everybody just gives up on him. But leaders can find a way to take a man or a woman and see in them that they carry something. Everybody has something special in them. 
Everybody's got a unique trait that they could kill it at in the business. You just got to understand you and you got to quit thinking about what other people think about you and you got to know where your edge is and what you're good at. My edge is, I'm going to outwork the chart. Remember I told you at the end of my life, I feel like God's going to give me a chart of who I was supposed to be. I'm going to outwork that chart. Okay? I want him to say, dang, Andy. Dang. And it's not about money. It's about how many people I helped. Okay? I told you I want to make the best salesman in the freaking country. All across the globe in the world, I want to be a part of every salesman's success. And all I want him to do is get what they deserve. In life, you don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate. You negotiate with your, yourself, am I gonna lay on this side of complacency and mediocrity, or am I gonna get on this side? Am I gonna see how deep the rabbit hole is? Am I gonna get myself and take myself to a level that I've never been to, and by the way, it's gonna be uncomfortable, okay? Because number one, right now, you fear stuff, okay? You gotta learn, there's nothing to fear. Number two, you're afraid of stuff. Quit being afraid. I don't know what you're afraid of. I, I see people that reach out to me, right? And they're like, man, you know, just when this happens, I'm really going to start pushing. What do you mean? Do it right now in your mess. Right now in your mess, make that your message. Come out strong, man. Write your testimony. Write your book. Write as we go. You don't need nothing. You know what you need is you. You need to be your own biggest fan. And I'll share this with you. You take what everyone says about you negative and you use it as fuel. You never, never take that stuff and back down and, and feel maybe like less significant because of what someone else has. People that hate on people are people that have already given up on their own dreams, right? So they want you to give up on yours. Or they're pursuing their dream and they see you as a threat. I didn't realize it, but at 19, when I was hustling and everybody hated me, guess what? I was a threat to them. But I'm gonna share this with you. I worked hard in the midst of nothing. I made 150,000 that year. Look, at 19, you can do the same thing. I don't care how old you are. You can be 65 and decide today's the day you draw the line in the sand. You can be 18, age doesn't matter. I'm 40 years old, I feel 18, all right. Struggling. The darkness may be what you need. I needed that dark place for a minute, okay? I believe in God and I, I want to be in the light, but man, I was in a dark place. You know, I felt like I was the only one that honestly believed in me just about this much and no one else did. But I felt like, man, I'm going to do this. And once I decided that I made that choice, it was over. And I made that choice in a dark place. And when you make that choice when you're struggling, and you do whatever it takes to make it, no matter what, do you know what happens? You freaking kill it. All right, so check this out. I'm gonna talk about re-looking at your situation, and I'm gonna talk about the way that you used to see stuff, you see it differently now. It's, it's like changing your lenses, okay? So if you take a, a pair of glasses, right, and you change the lens out on them, you know what happens? Perspectively, you start seeing things different. That's what you need to do. You need to see yourself differently. You need to see your life differently. Okay? You're valuable and you're worth it. And guess what? We're going to get into the grind, but you have to accept what your issues are and what your problems are before you can fix it. If you don't accept it, if you're pushing blame off on someone else, you're never going to kill it. Look, I want to share this with you. So there's a book that I read, it was called Extreme Ownership. It's a Navy SEAL book, okay? And it talks about basically taking ownership for everything. Everything is your fault. And I took everything in my life, and I, I didn't play the victim anymore. I, I took responsibility for it all, right? In my mess, and I took that, and I was walking around, I was like, hey, I'm good, I'm good. You know, like, I wasn't good though. And some of you guys, if I was to meet you right now, I'm like, hey, what's up, man, how you doing? You're like, good man I'm good I'm good you're not good you know what the deal is you're not good you need to call out what your problems are and you need to fix them so we can take your life and elevate it to where you're supposed to be and take that freaking chart right and make sure that you're gonna get who you're supposed to be not who you're settling for 
So you got to figure out who you are, accept it. And a lot of people walk around like I'm good, but guess what? People don't want you to do that. They don't want you to fix it. People don't want you to change. So you got to audit your circle and get everybody out from around you that doesn't have the same vision as you because you can't do it working around haters or living around haters around you, especially if you're looking to them for advice. Look, if I want to change my life, and, I, and look, I'm dead broke right now. I have not a dollar to my name. And I decide I want to get out and make $100,000 this year. If I walk up to another salesman and be like, hey, man, dude, I want, to, I want to change my life, man. Like, I really want to change my life. Like, I want to make $100,000 a year. I want to do, you know what he's going to say to me? Man, man, dude, just try to make like 50 grand. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I would do. And, and this business, man, it's not what it used to be, man. What are you talking about? This business right now, I got kids that are 20 years old making 25,000 a month. They're texting me nonstop, they're pay stubs showing me where they come from because we're training together. I got guys 60 years old sending me messages saying, Andy, nobody would hire me, but now that we've done this training together, I literally have taken myself as a mature adult at 60, which no one wants to hire a 60 year old, and guess what? They gave me a job paying me a $10,000 salary because I'm handling their marketing team in this side now because of the stuff that you taught me. Listen, everybody could have went to the grave, right, with like all this still in them, but they decided to play it. And that's my fear. Go to a nursing home. You go to a nursing home, you know what you're going to find out? You're going to find out all the old people have to talk about is regret. Nobody talks about how great of a life they have. Oh my God, listen, how you doing? Going to a nursing home, oh my God, it was amazing. Like my life, God, I, I just, there's so much I want to tell you that I did and it was amazing. No, no, go. You know what they say? They talk about regret. The regret that I would have is not playing all my music before I die, okay? That's my regret. My regret would be that on the other end, that you're, you're not even brave enough to send me a text message and just say, hey, help me, dude. Let's figure it out. I'm telling you, I, I am vouching to help any and every person out there with any struggle that wants to kill in a business. Am I a therapist? No ways. I don't need to know the logist of your problems. What I need to tell you is that I got your back. If no one else has your back, if everyone else says like, hey, you know, this guy's a loser, don't do that, you need to do this. Listen, if you know what you want to do and you want to kill it, team up with me. 918-210-0254, text me right now. I'm going to talk about this, starting the journey. Most people won't even start the journey. They talk about the journey, lots of talk, right? Yeah, man, 2020, new decade, this is what I'm going to do. You guys talk about everything, you have no action. Start the journey with me. Start it, man. In your mess right now, okay? Quit living the fake life that you're living and quit caring about these people that are judging you. Write them off, okay? Because look at this. I'm going to tell you this. When you care more about how someone's judging you than you wanting to change, you're going to stay in the same spot you're at right now and nothing's going to happen and you're not going to shift. Some of you, we're going to look up in three months and you're gonna be a different person. Hell, you'll be so different, we're gonna to have to change your name. You won't even be the same person, okay? Look, there's Andy Elliott, right? There's me. And then there's the way that I see myself when I'm in the zone. I'm not Andy Elliott. I'm a different person, okay? Because Andy Elliott was supposed to be a 225 pound dude that likes to eat like candy and stuff all the time, right? I like to watch TV. I like to be lazy. I like to kick back. You know what I'm saying? I don't like to go to the gym and grind it and sweat until I want to throw up and get nauseous. I don't want to do that stuff. But you know what? I don't want to be that person. I don't want that mommy voice in the back of my head saying, hey, everything's okay. No, it isn't okay. What it is, is that it's time for me to get to work. And you guys want to outwork that chart that you're supposed to live? You guys want to really have your full potential? Give your kids what you're supposed to give? Have your future family or your family right now get everything that they deserve? Maybe anything and everything you want in life is literally just the choice of you deciding that you don't care what anyone else thinks anymore. 
And guess what? Team up with somebody that believes in you. And I don't care who you are on the other end. I don't care what you've been through. I believe in you. 100%. All right. The, the third thing, what's wrong with you has to be a focal point, okay? So what I did, I, I told you, I had a severe learning disability. And what I did is that literally, I went to the store, I bought a stack of spiral notebooks. And I took and I started writing and writing and writing and writing and writing. So I have word tracks that I use all the time. And do you know what? Those word tracks were only learned by writing them down 25 times. Now guess what? I'm done. It's in me for the rest of my life. That's the way that I learn. But because it takes me so long to learn something, do you think I let that stop me? No. And for people that want to say, man, that guy's not smart. Listen, I'm going to tell you this. You're right. I wasn't born smart, but I've gotten really smart because I study nonstop. And guess what? When you talk about family and you guys living for different goals and stuff, guess what? A lot of people, they just have financial goals. They don't have marriage goals or father goals. I'm going to tell you this. Living the fulfilled life has nothing to do with money. But I think people underestimate the amount of money that it takes to live. So that's why we have to get our crap together and start getting that money so we're not working 15 years from now still trying to make it. My goal is next year, you guys team up with me, recession hits in the next year or two, you kill it and make more money than you've ever made in your life while everyone else is crying and screaming like little babies. Okay? We'll capitalize on it. So, I want to get to this last part. Strategize on one problem at a time. Okay? This is how you become unbelievable. One problem at a time. Just one. Pick it. Reach out to me. Say, hey Andy, I got three things that's a big issue right now. Number one, I'm lazy. Just call it out. I'm lazy. And I'm not saying that you, but th number two, listen, man, I, I play the victim, right? You know what I'm saying? Like my, my wife divorced me. My kids don't want to see me. I mean, maybe that's you, or maybe I'm 18 years old. You know, I'm 19, I'm 20. I want to get in sales. My parents say I'm stupid for getting in sales. They don't want me in it. I don't want to go to college. Listen, dude, I got you. I got you. It doesn't matter. I, I'm a mom. I've been staying at home for years with the kids. I'm getting in the business. Guys, women are killing it in this business. Whatever it is, I don't care. Let's focus on one problem and let's smash it out and then let's move on. And then before too long when you look up, all your problems are handled. You're a, a whole different person. You're getting the life that you deserve, right? Because you've put the hustle in, right? You have to be willing to suffer for this new life. You're going to suffer being comfortable. Why not suffer in the pain zone and get what you want? It's addicting. It's fun. Now, with that being said, before you know it, all your problems are fixed. And look, tr stop trying to be the best of the average people around you. And, and lastly, don't be a one-timer. Let me explain to you what a one-timer is. A one-timer is somebody that does something one time, and that's their identity that they carry with them for the rest of their life. One time. You made one good month, you made $20,000. I'll walk up to a salesman, I'm like, hey, what's going on, man? Hey, how's your month? Oh, pretty good. Hey, so roughly, what, what, what kind of money are you earning? Uh, you know, about 20,000. No, 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 no. Your year to date is 75,000. You made a $20,000 month, and you're owning that in your head. Why don't you tell yourself, you're worth 20,000 a month, right? But you work like a $6,000 hand. That's why, that's what you're consistently really making. Look at me. I want to tell you this. I can take you, if your goal right now is to make $20,000 a month, I can take you to have a goal of making $20,000 a week and hitting it. But you're the one that has to put the work in, just like I do, just like I've done, and just like I'm going to continue to do. But if you want to take this journey, I'll take it with you. Guys, send me a text, 918-210-0254. Let's test mediocrity. Text me, let me get you this bracelet. If it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you, and let's not be afraid of anything. Have a great day.